Welcome folks to the Rocky Road Show. Rocky here. Today what we have for this episode is a shock absorber. Now this particular one is out of a mid-90s minivan, a General Motors one at that. Now what you see here is a front shock absorber for the same minivan I just described. This particular one has well over 50,000 miles as the rest of the ones on the vehicle at the time. They're all changed out to new now. Now I can drive it in safety. Uh, this particular one should be a gas charge shock. Now you'll really know when a gas charge shock is gone because when you compress when you compress the shock as I'm doing here all the way down if there's any gas left in it at all that should come up all by itself. Also there wasn't a whole lot of resistance in this particular shock. It's shot. It's ready for the the boneyard. What I've done today is I got the other front shock and decided to cut it apart so you and I both could see what was hiding inside. Okay, here's the main cylinder. It's actually a double walled cylinder shock. This particular airbag, as I'm going to call it for now, must be something to do with the aeration of the, the fluid. It's full of shock oil, a very light weight of shock oil. This one actually installs, this airbag actually installs inside the shock with the rest of this following in behind, but for today's demonstration I'm just going to leave that out because all it's done is going to do is get crunched in there unless it's done properly. Now what we have here, basically a plain tube, it's just a very smooth cylinder inside, and inside the tube slides the rest of the action here. Now what we have here is a piston, it actually has a bleed in there so oil can travel in and out, but it's, it's not too free flowing. And the rest of this is the packing material, a spring, conical washer in there, and a, and a packing washer here to keep the fluid from escaping from the shock as it's, as it's moving. This is the end cap I cut off with a hacksaw, and here's the rest of the tube here. When they're sitting in the vehicle, this particular one sits like this. This is the way it sits. This is the bottom underneath the car. It bolts onto the lower A-frame suspension arm. The top goes right through the coil spring which is around here and up and through and then it bolts with some big rubber bushings into a bracket on the top and it's tightened down with a nut to secure it. That's what they look like installed for this particular one. Now back to the disassembly and reassembly. So what we have here I just described all in one unit. The rest of the, the brains to this thing, essentially this this is the, uh, the valving stack. All these little washers you see here are spring steel. And there's one that goes on the other side. And there's two bleed holes right in here. I'll, I'll describe how they work. There's a, a larger spring washer here. It actually seals there. But actually the, the oil can travel in that direction. Now there's a spring that backs this up. As the oil travels down back through there, when the piston rod is being drawn back, this washer is allowed to open up quite a bit to let um, oil flow through that at quite, quite a good rate. What I'll do here is assemble it for you so you can see what it actually looks like. And there's, like I just described, that little washer that can actually pull back. It's spring-loaded. And for the other side, there's this special washer. It has two cutouts in it. And it allows the oil to flow through, and it's all regulated. The engineers have designed this in such a way that it allows the oil to flow only at a certain rate in one direction, and at a greater rate on another direction. All these are just like a stack of cards, different size spring washers. They all just stack up like this, just like cards. They're placed on that pin, which was longer before I had to grind it off in order to disassemble this thing. and it all goes together like so. One big sandwich. This whole unit when it's assembled is pressed into the end of the cylinder. The oil travels both ways and the flow rate is different. Compression would probably take a lot more resistance whereas when the shock extends it, it, the oil flows faster. Now I'll just disassemble that for a minute. This actually presses into the end of the cylinder. 
good whack with a hammer would do that. The rest of the, uh, the piston assembly would just normally slide in here like so. This would press in here, it's just a few hits with a hammer and it would all assemble like so. Don't forget the airbag. We won't use that now. The whole unit has been designed so this when it's compressed it's either welded or if you can get a close-up on that there's actually what in machining terms is called a knurl. Could very well be that this cylinder was pushed into this cap and then this whole thing was rolled in a lathe or some other form of heavy equipment and it was actually pressed on there. So that's basically it. The valve is, is not in there because uh, all this stuff would just all start flying around in there and it's only going to the junkyard anyway. I may salvage some of the steel here for future projects. And that's how you have it for the front shock. Now here's a comparison in size to a rear shock. Like twice the size almost. Same thing with the rear shock. This particular one mounts this way, this being mounted on the axle, and this on a bracket just underneath the frame in the vehicle.